In 2020, we've endured a pandemic that has threatened and taken lives and threatened livelihoods for most of the year, seen troubling displays of social unrest and had an election with strong feelings on both sides. Much of what we've seen in 2020 has been unprecedented, a first for our lifetimes. News 8's editor Michael Scalise takes an in-depth look back at how world events impacted San Diegans this year. We're expecting that in, across the U.S. we will likely have more confirmed cases in the coming days and weeks. This is an RNA virus and it mutates fairly rapidly. Maintain distance from others, wash your hands often, and wear a face covering. Well, I absolutely believe that the virus was present in San Diego before our first confirmed case. And healthcare workers fear that things are about to get a lot worse. The, the nurses are strained, we're burnt out. Continue to practice safe physical distancing. Stay home. The beaches, boardwalks, and parks are closed. This includes the water. Ever since access to the ocean and boardwalks were closed earlier this week, San Diegans did not take that coronavirus precaution lightly. If you keep cutting off the places where we walk and exercise, we're going to keep getting tighter together. Oh, you can go to a grocery store, but you can't walk along the ocean. People are buying toilet paper in bulk, leaving shelves empty, and customers either frustrated or confused. We cannot control the virus. We can control how we prepare for it. We're moving away now from essential and non-essential to lower risk. Counties on the state's monitoring list must go further and close malls, fitness centers, worship services, and hair and nail salons. Keep doing this to us. Mentalities is already, you know, messed up. These decisions were difficult. Comic-Con is now the latest casualty of the coronavirus pandemic. We will be testing individuals with symptoms are those in high-risk groups. Now more than ever, it is vital that we take precautions. Officials think it will only get worse in the days ahead. But we all need to daily remind ourselves that the actions we're taking are ones that are designed to save lives. Pfizer states that they will ship out the vaccines within hours or 24 hours of getting the approval. While this moment is extraordinary in time, we have a lot of work to do. It started with a controversial police encounter that quickly went viral and days later erupted into riots and violence on the streets of La Mesa. Bottles and rocks were thrown at the law enforcement officers. The once peaceful protests spiraling into a riot and just after 9 p.m. reports of looting began coming in. Two hours later, the fires and damage exploded. deputies take action against protesters who defied the 7 p.m. curfew in Santee. Now is the time to do the right thing and defund the police. Protests erupted throughout the county this weekend. This is radical. Law enforcement used pepper spray and other tactics to disperse the crowd. It is clear that our system of policing is not keeping our communities safe. As you cruise down the street, you see more boarded up storefronts and messages of support for black lives and peace. We stand with them. Uh, we just also want to make sure that we protect the properties. San Diego Police Department needs to be effective, accountable, transparent, and above all else, have the trust of the public. What do we want? We need a three strike strategy for police officers. Three strikes are out. I don't want to stand up for my local business owners, but we still have to support you know, people who are subject to injustice and victims who are crying out and not getting redressed. We want to get to get our students back on our campuses as soon as we can, but we will not put your students in harm's way. 
Gavin Newsom says the state is laying out its plan to handle COVID-19 when it comes to large public gatherings and public schools. The state and the federal government were not providing enough support for schools to reopen safe. The SDSU campus remains quiet as in-person classes remain suspended. It's our reality now and to cry about it or be upset is not doing any good. Grabbing all their belongings and getting out of the dorms at San Diego State University. SDSU sent an email to staff advising them to be ready to set up virtual classrooms. Not all classrooms do students have the ability to social distance, especially in our high school and middle school. The decision has left many working parents scrambling, wondering what to do about child care. We want San Diego Unified School District to offer some options and reopen in person. Classes will resume as planned online only. We've seen the effects slowly over time start to, you know, really affect the children. Schools can physically open for in-person education when the county that they're operating in has been off our monitoring list for 14 consecutive days. I'm afraid that my kids are going to fall behind. Schools everywhere are giving parents options. We will raise the bar on instruction and provide an active, engaging learning experience for all of our students. It's kind of weird not seeing like everybody around school and all the teachers and stuff. We're keeping our fingers crossed that they'll be able to do on campus. Newsom laid out additional guidelines, including required face coverings for staff and students in third grade and above, hand washing stations, and required testing and contact tracing. A row of cars lined up outside Canyon View Elementary School Thursday as parents picked up their kids from campus for the first time in nearly seven months. It was scary. In between, classrooms are disinfected. I really think we need to learn how to live with this and stay safe in the presence of this virus. I've been voting all my life, and this is the most important election for sure. It's very encouraging that so many people are, are registering to vote. I'm so excited. A steady crowd Monday at the Registrar of Voters office. No one really has a handbook for running a campaign during a pandemic. Campaigning in a pandemic is really different. It has definitely changed the way we campaign. It's been very tough campaigning during the pandemic. But we're making it up as we go. Statewide, more than 2 million Californians have already cast a ballot. On November 3rd, first time voters Voters say their vote will be focused on leadership. I, I just know people my age are like feeling defeated that their first election is even worse than the awful 2016 election. Would you who shut up, man? Person? Who would I respect to have and who would be the best person for the job? Gentlemen, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. People are really focused on the possibilities of interfering with voting this year. Mail-in ballots are very dangerous. There's tremendous fraud involved. And the president's going to have to come forward with a concrete evidence. It's just bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre. So we're going to stand with President Trump until this election uh, is certified. The last four years, all we heard was how that election was rigged. And so we need to just prove once and for all that it's not. And we will make America great again. President Trump supporters say if it's proven Joe Biden won the election fair and square, President Trump should concede. The Republicans are distraught. They're not happy. We have no doubt that when the count is finished, Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. After a long and contentious election, Joe Biden has been named president-elect of the United States. <laughs> who seeks not to divide, but unify. I think Biden is the person that can unify our country. I'm like feeling, I'm ecstatic. I'm like, thank you, God. We are America, we are great, and we need to prove that and just be peaceful and bring that positive energy back. So just remember, my fellow Americans, it is your right to vote. And in two days, we start a new year. Let's hope it's a fresh one.